Well, it is the club that Jack built, isn't it? Well, I've never seen that before. What a moment for Jack Walker, lifelong Blackburn Rovers supporter. Followed out there by Tim Show with the skipper. Who just for a moment, I think, was going to hold the rest back. We've seen that done before. <laughs> and let Jack go on his own. How about that? Great gesture. <laughs> Smashing go, isn't it? Excellent. Well, he will love that. And he's done a tremendous thing for the club with Kenny and uh, leading the side out of Wembley. That's been a dream of his for a long time. Side by side with Alex Ferguson, the manager of the champions and the FA Cup winners, Manchester United. Who's done it before, look. Just, just... I think pointing out the way to Jack there. <laughs> John Scales, you played in the cup final, you played in the charity shield before, do you echo what Gary's saying, the best stadium in the world to play? Yeah, I mean, I obviously haven't had the experience of playing at too many other stadiums around the world, but, um, yeah, it's going back since such a long time ago, the 88 cup final, and playing the charity shield sort of three or four months later, uh, it's a fabulous place to be uh, involved in any game, and a player, I think, you know, it's very difficult to realise when you come in these situations in cup finals. Uh, you always expect to come back over and over again, but uh, you know it never happens. So uh, I think they will relish the relish the chance of playing here today. Um, any opportunity, it's a fabulous place and a great atmosphere here today. There's the manager of Rovers, Kenny Duncan. Look, <laughs> all smiles. There's a rarity, some might say, but uh, I think Jack Walker, the focus of his attention, and a great moment for the owner. There he is. Well, he's in privileged territory. Not many have done that, Jack. And now, of course, the official presentations. There's another legendary figure in the northwest, Tom Finney. <laughs> I think they know each other fairly well. It's about Miller Chip and Graham Kelly there, of course. Tom, the former England international. President of Preston North End these days. CBE in 1991. Nice that these football characters get involved on occasions like this. And right too. David May, Manchester United. Blackburn Rovers at the end of last season. I should think he's pleased that Alan Shearer isn't about today. New strip for United. Whatever the rights and wrongs of that. It does look well. Alex Ferguson. Who's won the lot, of course, both sides of the border. Philip Don, our official today. Couldn't have a better setting. Couldn't have a better day for it. So for the Charity Shield, Manchester United against Blackburn Rovers, commentators Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Thanks, Richard. Hello again, everyone. The occasion here is such a laudable one. Money raised by football for good causes, but as far as the game itself is concerned, clashes between Alec Ferguson and Kenny Dalglish, always very, very competitive. Nothing charitable in that respect. Competition over players, of course, between the two clubs, and David May in a Manchester United shirt is one intriguing feature this afternoon. Though... Paul Parker will be pressing for his regular place by next weekend. Tony Gale has been in the game long enough to know that anything can happen. Even so, last week's phone call from Blackburn must have come as a great surprise. And here he is playing at Wembley for the first time in his life. The Manchester United team, David May will be at right back, Lee Sharp at left back. And Brian McClare in midfield with Dennis Irwin and Roy Keane still recovering from their World Cup exertions. Eric Cantona available today, but not for the first three league games after his latest brush with authority. Andy? Yes, one or two changes, Martin, but I expect to see that familiar 4-4-2 formation. I'm looking forward to seeing this left side here, with both Sharp and Giggs in tandem. Also look at Paul Lynch number eight. Normally regarded as a holding player in there, but I've noticed, and certainly his record pre-season shows, that he's wanting to get forward and start scoring goals early. Well, Blackburn besieged by injuries. Shearer, Sutton, Newell, Batty, Warhurst, Gallagher, some £15 million pounds of players all out. So that emergency call went out to Tony Gale, who'd been freed by West Ham. Robbie Slater, an Australian international, English-born though, recruited from French football, 
the loyal Mark Atkins pace when the action on his 26th birthday and 20 year old Ian Pearce plays up front and his likely partner this afternoon Stuart Rickley yeah lots of changes for Blackburn Rovers but I expect that familiar 4-4-2 Ripley giving a free roll to roam about Ian Pearce up front so Blackburn Rovers kick off they won the Charity Shield just once back in 1912 They've played for it only once since then, and that was in 1928. But look at this for a bright start from them. Gary Pallister in trouble as Stuart Ripley departing his normal wide role in midfield to play up front today. He's done that before, of course, and he played the ball into the danger area there, tellingly, and Pallister just to scramble it away. Well, there. 84 points last season would in other years have given Blackburn perhaps the title a tremendous effort which certainly merited the invitation from the Football Association to participate today over the claims of Chelsea who were of course runners up to United in the cup Manchester United current holders of the Charity Shield, of course. They also uh, won it the first time it was up for grabs. That was 86 years ago. Tim Flowers has now got the number one jersey for Blackburn. Bobby Mims had it last season. Uh, of course, did always play. We are moving towards a second season of squad numbers in the uh, FA Carling Premiership. Both teams uh, using that this fixture called by Henry Ripley having problems with the bounce and here is Robbie Slater in his preferred position wide on the right of midfield it's initially from uh, the Liverpool area Ormskirk made his name in Australian football and has done very well uh, elsewhere in Europe before coming here quite late in his career at the age of 29 chance for him at Blackburn Rovers, particularly with the problems that uh, Rovers have at the moment with so many players on the casualty list. Henningberg, he did play in the World Cup of course, all three of Norway's games. Ken Sherwood with the captain. Peter Schmeichel in that lime green today. He's uh, pains to point out that uh, the colour, the choice of the kit manufacturer, not his own personal preference. <laughs> start and the Bruce just hesitated and allowed uh, Slater to get possession and get in the cross difficult for Pallister Lee Sharp steers it back to Schmeichel and he's been a good start line for Blackburn it really has many more changes I would suggest in Manchester United but a very very positive start very confident start popping the ball about trying to get as many players a touch of it early on as they can think that the charity show but many people say well it's only at the end of the day a friend of it's, it's the last real competitive match of your pre-season players are almost 95 percent ready to go and they're using this just for that five percent another week of training to go but that's basically just sharpening up there'll be no real hard training in the next week this is probably the toughest training session these players will do you bet your life you'll go compete for you don't come to Wembley and go compete some managers say that uh, in their minds it is a pre-season game but Alec Ferguson significantly said don't call it that on our behalf today neither team uh, in full working order in their pre-season uh, matches Blackburn indeed have lost four of five games spread around Europe in Norway, Denmark a couple more recently in Scotland beaten by Aberdeen with Kenny Dalglish himself played the second half and 45 year old coach Tony Parks came on for the last 15 minutes another indication of the difficulties that uh, Rovers have had in getting themselves settled here's Pallister Hicks so much expected of him this season Sharp not a rival for his position at the moment because he's being used as a left back 
Leclerc to Ince. Okay, McGray and Lasso, sparkly. Used to Wembley, of course, now. Played three times for England under Terry Venables here. David May getting some predictable barricade from the Blackburn fans who used to cheer him. And you just feel with all these injuries that Blackburn uh, might be regretting allowing David May to move. It was a freedom of contract situation, but David May would uh, probably say that the uh, initiative didn't come from Rovers to sort it out. Not as much a positive thought as it came from Alec Ferguson and Manchester United. Philip Don is the referee interrupting his family holiday in France to be here. Well briefed about the FIFA guidelines, of course, after his World Cup involvement in the United States. We not too much of uh, Kanchelskis as yet. We saw plenty of him last season. Attributed so much to the entertainment factor. Week in, week out. I think what we've got today as well, two of the hardest working defensive units. I'm talking about the four, the back four players and the four midfield players, Mark. But often you get two teams who have eight people who work defensively as hard as they do here. Cantona's flick. Not coming off. Ripley. Holding off Ince. Flag is up for offside, Ian Pearce got the ball, also Jason Wilcox was coming in, but uh, not in an, what you might call an active position perhaps. Well, he tried hard, you know, and I tell you what, I'm not so sure, I mean we talk about strikers been given the benefit of the doubt in this new ruling, man. I'm not so sure that he wasn't in line with Lee Sharp there. I think Pallister had held him up well and he was offside as far as Gary Pallister was concerned, but I think Lee Sharp had dropped in there and Ian Pearce is unlucky not to be allowed to go on there. Pierce, who has played at the back of his previous club, Chelsea, and in a way he's a bit similar to Chris Sutton, a year younger, a uh, player who can do two jobs. And, uh, Kenny Dalglish having to dig deep into his squad to come here and compete in the charity shield. Here's Gale, Blackburn Rovers, he's taken a bit of getting used to it after his time at West Ham, ten years free transfer at the end of the contract that expired in the summer. Of course he might have been here with West Ham in an FA Cup final three years ago but he got sent off in the semi-final at a crucial stage and Nottingham Forest won at Villa Park that particular afternoon. Many felt Gale was particularly unlucky. Well he was the victim of another <laughs> law change wasn't he? caused a lot of confusion at the time. Lissa. Wilcox setting off. Both he and Pierce squaring up for a ball into feet. And Lissa chooses to find Ripley. He's shown uh, quite uh, an accomplishment so far as a central striker. He's got good movement, Mark. It won't be easily marked. At times, I think, centre-backs like to mark genuine centre-forwards. And we could be getting the first booking. It's taken eight minutes. And it goes to Tim Sherwood for a tackle that shook up Ince. Well, this is what we're going to get an awful lot of here. Tim Sherwood is slightly late there. I'm think, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to get used to this as well, man. I thought he, made, he makes a genuine attempt for the ball there. That wasn't really a violent tackle in any description of the word. But it's going to get a yellow card and now another one of those and Tim Sherwood could be in big trouble. Down as the season was in. Wasted ball forward, noted by the Blackburn fans from David May. Ripley making uh, Bruce work hard across the full width of the pitch. He got the throw for Manchester United. Again, Manchester United involved in the international tournament at Ibrox, where they finished four of four. And uh, Eric Cantona was in the headlines for the wrong reasons. And I think he is certainly still uh, in the black as far as the uh, 
deal to Manchester United was concerned, despite the fact that he's seen red on uh, more occasions than uh, anyone would want, particularly him. Hendrian quickly on Hughes, here's Bruce Cantona, who uh, of course loves to come deep and try and take things from midfield, the ball there for Giggs to chase, Tim Flowers comes out and smacks it away on the volley, very capably indeed. Well he obviously wasn't sure exactly where he was. I think when he makes contact, but look at Giggs's run, it's a wonderful run. And you can't play offside when a player runs that square across the pitch. But obviously Flowers thought if he caught it, he'd go outside the box, therefore conceding a free kick, opted to volley it and got it just about right. Thanks for the pass. And for Kanchelskis, he missed that tournament in Scotland with a minor injury. It's a great run from Giggs, Martin. It's the kind of run that if a wide man makes a full back's got a problem. He desperately wants to pass him on and he wants to play him offside. But Giggs was almost so good he couldn't. A step forward in the end by Cantona, Hughes and McClare. The supporting cast. Mark Hughes who really made a habit of getting goals at Wembley. Last season he did it in four separate games. Uh, to refer back to Cantona they rarely lose of course Manchester United when uh, he's in the team but they did lose three of the last four league games without him just a point to uh, put to you bearing in mind that they go into three league games in the next few days without him Slater with a deep cross it's Ian Pearce trying to guide it back Ripley going in Schmeichel coming out and using it quickly in the end accurately, Mark Atkins cut it out well, now Sharp, lovely warm afternoon, hardly a breath of wind around Wembley Stadium, maybe not quite so lovely for the players, but uh, after a summer we spent talking about the difficulties of World Cup temperatures in the United States, it's nothing quite as uh, debilitating as that, and a uh, bright and brisk start here as you'd expect between these two rivals. David May is with Manchester United, Roy Keane with Manchester United, a Blackburn target. Alan Shearer with Blackburn, a Manchester United target. Chris Sutton interested United but chose uh, Ewood Park instead. And uh, big name players become available, we must get used now to Messrs Ferguson and Dalglish. Crossing swords and uh, seeing who can write the biggest sums on the checkbooks. What a nice gesture it was by Kenny Dalglish to bestow on Jack Walker to lead the team out. That's something money can't buy. That's to be uh, awarded. And Kenny Dalglish passing up on the honour himself. He knows uh, a lot about Charity Shields, of course. His team have conceded a free kick here. Yeah, Graham Lissot went a little bit to sleep. He got caught ball watching. And the ball was played back to David May. Lasso went forward, but fortunately for him, Sherwood was alive to Kinchelskis' run. And I don't know whether that would have got a yellow card, but it has done. Tim Sherwood booked as well, Mark. Oh no, it's Graham Lasso. I was going to say, it couldn't be Sherwood because he would have been off. And maybe that's why he wasn't booked. But Graham Lasso's been booked, obviously, for dissent. That's another thing that the referees are determined to uh, be hot on, indeed, have directed to be hot on. Protesting. Giggs takes the free kick. So Lasseau and Sherwood both put in uh, inside the opening 14 minutes. Tim Flower just coming out and having a word with the two centre backs, Colin Hendry and Tony Gale, possibly about a separate incident. on that Sherwood um, foul and sometimes in slow motion you know incidents do look a bit more dramatic than they really are and uh, it just looks as though in the replay that Sherwood put his elbow into Kanchelskis' uh, throat
I wouldn't mind betting you had Sherwood not been bookmarked and they'd have gotten a yellow card there. Tim Sherwood also a Wembley debutant today. But a good number of Blackburn players have been here in other circumstances. Rose, of course, very different two years ago under Kenny Dalglish. Got into the uh, Premier League by beating Leicester in the second division playoff final, as it was called then. Mike Newell got the goal from the penalty spot. Newell out after a cartilage operation. This is a lot of the of things that come this season. I think when the top teams get involved against each other, they're going to have to work tremendously hard for anything they get. I think we can see that already in the 15 minutes. Nice and knocked off by McClare. Hughes off! Well, it was a stupendous shot. And all credit to Tim Flowers, showing England quality to keep it out. I'll tell you what, Martin, if we're marking down saves of the season, we may just have seen one there. We all know about Hughes' remarkable ability to volley. And that was a magnificent save, it really was. Here's Sharp. It's behind Sharp. Pierce trying to charge out. It's a make do and mend really for Blackburn in attack. But what they have in goal is very much their first choice player in that department. And Tim Flowers, down by his left hand post, reacted so smartly. Otherwise, well, it would have been hats off to Mark Hughes at Wembley yet again. Well, what made the save so good, Mark, as well was he, he was unsighted. But it came from such a short distance. The most vulnerable area a goalkeeper has is close to his feet. But he moved so quickly and so well. Sharp. Giggs. Manchester United at their second home here, settling down to business. We're warming to it. We really are. Great start from Blackburn, but... The Manchester United players are warming to the task now. Now Ripley with some room to run into with the ball. Pierce to his right. Slater coming out from the right hand side. It's through for Pierce. Pallister is the defender. Pierce has to check back. Lasso. And he couldn't get away from Kanchelskis who was quick on the turn as well. Not many do. It's one advantage of having Andre and Chelsea's back there in that position. Not many going to run past them. And Pierce took the uh, safe option then, just turning back. I suppose there was just half a chance he might have bought a ticket in the raffle and hoped it was the winning one. Taking an early shot as the ball was... Uh, I think had it been on the other side, Martin, he, he would have pulled the trigger. Gale going towards the near post. Schmeichel shouting loudly. <laughs> just uh, a little annoyed with that Mark Atkins who came off the line tried to pilfer the ball from him Michael due to play for Denmark on Wednesday friendly against Finland which was in some doubt because of the bonus payments due to the Danish internationals I believe that's been sorted out off the goalkeeper a yard or so away from where Giggs hoped he would collect what would have been the opening goal well he hits it well enough Mark Hughes and this is his strength turning quickly he won't be happy with that Tim Flowers he would have expected to have gathered that quite comfortably but when he needed a defender around he had one McClare Blackburn pushing out to defend the line just outside the penalty area when they first got into the top division they were very organised very hard to beat and you just feel talking uh, to one or two of them this week that in these circumstances that type of attitudes come back to their minds they know that uh, the odds are a bit against them here because of the absentees but they're 
prepared to knuckle down, battle it out. The uh, bowl when they can be Back to the over adventurous and hopefully be able to soak up what Manchester United throw at them. But here comes Lasso and that buccaneering way of his down the left hand side. He's gone a long way and uh, Michael makes the save look as straightforward as it probably was. Sometimes goalkeepers would have uh, earned a bit more applause by turning shots like that over. Schmeichel was already thinking about the counter-attack once the uh, ball was in his hands. It's good play though from Graham Lasseau. He allowed Andrik Chelsea to make a long diagonal run. And when Blackman won the ball back quickly, they were able to transfer it into that space. But could Chelsea have left? Well, and Lasseau just galloped into it. Such a, a loyal servant for Alec Ferguson. He was looking for support. Diggs couldn't quite supply it then. His pierce pressed by Pallister. Bruce. Cantonet. Oh, he was certainly uh, bought off the ball. Referees are going to be busy, Martin. That's another yellow card. Well, Cantona, of course, can be wound up by defenders. Well, he plays a one-two, and Colin Henry comes in. He hangs a lazy leg there. And I think in that situation, I think even the old ruling, Philip Don's probably quite right. Free kick to United, taken by May. Did well by Berg, who had a very good season last time around, the Norwegian for Blackburn. Vicks with a flick. Oh, and it's brought down by Colin Henry. It's a penalty to Manchester United. And Eric Cantona, who did the job from the spot twice against Chelsea in the FA Cup final, goes to collect the ball. Well, there's no doubt. You see, Colin Henry's not, he doesn't know inches around. He thinks he's got time, and pounces. And there's no doubt in my mind. The referee's got an easy decision. That's a penalty. Here we go again. Henry thinks he can run out, but look at his speed of ends. On it in a flash. Henry hangs that left leg out again, and this time he's not giving away a free kick, he's giving away a penalty. So another Wembley penalty for Eric Cantona against Tim Flowers. 1-0 to Manchester United. I've never known a man look so confident when he takes a penalty in a game that matters, Martin. I know he missed one at the Rangers tournament last week when he was throwing around in a shootout. In a shootout. But this, you look at this. He's so confident. I honestly didn't expect anything other than Tim Flowers walking into the back of the net to pick it out. We're halfway through the first half. And Cantona with 25 goals last season in competitive matches for Manchester United has his first this time around. The expense of Blackburn Rovers and Colin Hendry in particular, who was so palpably late, booked only seconds earlier, and Blackburn in that respect on the receiving end, and now on the scoreline as well. Although uh, Wilcox tries to repair the damage quickly. holders and of course remember that they scored first against Arsenal here last year and then Ian Wright conjured up an equaliser and it went to the uh, penalty shootout there David Seaman had the uh, decisive kick as it turned out with Schmeichel saving Cantona chased effectively in the end by Atkins There's three yellow cards for Blackburn already. And you wonder about Wembley uh, sendings off few and far between in the past. Of course, Andrew Kanchelskis was sent off playing in the League Cup final here last season. And a man who knows both Blackburn and Manchester United very well, Kevin Moran, also uh, had to walk in the game when the Champions League was playing back in 
Sharp did enough, Martin. He, he was struggling. I think Lee Sharp knew that because Pierce just pulled behind Ballister. You see there, and Sharp's just got to put him off. I don't think he's going to win it, but he just his body in front of him, and that's enough to put Pierce off a clear header. Ian Pierce, only an England youth international, had a year in the reserves after signing from Chelsea. Chipped him with some useful performances towards the end of last season when finally Blackburn couldn't just sustain what was just a superb challenge. They finished eight points behind United. They won only one of their last five matches after that magnificent pursuit. Callister. In terms of the uh, tactical approach from the two camps, Andy, not too much new to uh, ponder on. I think when you consider the successes of both camps last year, then why should there be too many changes, Martin? Fine tuning, as opposed to major changes, I think we'll find from these two this year. Sherwin. Sure. So, looking to be the outlet on the left again. Chelsea's there barring his way this time, so he uses Wilcox. Kinter's going to look up alongside Pierce. Sherwood letting fly. Well, an emphatic statistic there to support Manchester United's claims that the score line is a justified one. But Kenny Dalglish, more than anyone, appreciates the difficulties that Black and Rovers are in here. At this Wembley showpiece. But it's an opportunity for him as a manager to learn about one or two of his fringe players. It's good chasing back by Robbie Slater. And I will have noted that. There's Henning Berg joining in in midfield. Pierce trying to stay onside. Linesman is flagging. Paul almost broke back for Berg to chase again, but the game not already been stopped. There's a problem right on the centre spot for Gary Pallister. Now, a new Manchester United physio this season. David Fever, who's no newcomer to Wembley, he's been here eight times before in the sport of rugby league, four with Wigan, four with Great Britain, parting of the ways with Jim McGregor and Manchester United, Jim who's been such a friendly and familiar face around the scene for a long time, we wish him well in his uh, future career. I'm, I'm wondering, Mark, all these new directives, it, it isn't one that a player shouldn't get treatment on the pitch? Well. I mean, here's the engine, you can see here, he gets involved with Ripley in the halfway line, he's stretching a bit. Perhaps turns his ankle, you see he reaches down immediately to it. What so you're I not going to see is the stretches coming on, like uh, we saw in the World Cup. The uh, association really? have decided that because it cannot happen everywhere, that's what I've been told, I'm not so sure that I would agree with that. Um, but they're not going to fully implement something that I think was a success in the World Cup in one particular area the top players feigning injury because they had to go off straight away so it's still the old rule you can get treated on the pitch you've just seen it <laughs> so there's David Fever well known in the world of rugby league now trying to uh, do the right medical job for Manchester United
signal. That's a different manoeuvre there for Blackburn Rovers. Quite come off, but uh, Ripley has the shot and hooks it wide. Well, the signal was OK, <laughs> but the delivery of the free kick wasn't up to standard. from the FA Carling Premiership. We start our Super Sunday, next Sunday, Leicester City against Newcastle United. Leicester back amongst the big boys, and Manchester United on our Monday night football at the City Ground, another of the promoted clubs from the East Midlands, Nottingham Forest. Chance, we hope, to see Brian Roy, our studio guest today, show off his considerable range of skills. Wilcox. Schmeichel with a loud shout. And a quick throw. And Tony Gale uh, still betting into his partnership with Colin Hendry. Gale, who was training with Barnett for Hoffman, got his number. Ripley. And now Slater. Sherwood, Wilcox thinking about challenging for it and then thinking better of it because the uh, huge frame of Peter Schmeichel is coming out towards him. Well, he's warmed up as well. First couple of throws, quick throws out. Didn't reach the target, but now Peter Schmeichel's launching that ball the way we know he can. 40, 50 yards upfield, straight to a red jersey. Cantona, lovely ball for Giggs. Offside. Nice. Shouldn't have been. Kempchelskis. You know, Mark, when a, when a ball's played across like that and you've got a player on the far side like Andre Kempchelskis is there, you can see him on the left of the screen. And he's looking across the line, now is he offside? Ball's played in there, now he's looking along the line, he's looking along the line, he shouldn't be offside, he should be keeping himself onside. Oh, it's tight, it's tight. But I think the linesman probably just right. But he shouldn't be getting offside when he can look all the way along the line. Lasso. Here's Sherwood. To the way, almost by Palace to that. Just United building from that. Supporting Giggs. He does need some help, but <laughs> he got too close to him. Sherwood, room for Ripley. Only Pierce in the middle for Blackburn. The odds favoured Manchester United, and that's the way it panned out. Ripley. Stuff ahead of Sherwood. May is there before Pierce. Cantona dropping deep again. Who gets involved in the game and waiting his pass beautifully for Kanchelskis, who uh, finally went down under challenge from Wilcox, who joins the list. The fourth Blackburn player to receive the yellow card in the first half here of the Charity Shield. Well, you can see he's trying to tuck away at Kanchelskis, he's pulling his arm, and Andrew Kanchelskis managed to stay on his feet. Jason Wilcox would be receiving a yellow card. Oh, <laughs> he was surprised when Cantona does that. Remember, it was his uh, beautifully delivered pass that got Wilcox into trouble on that far side. Ripley, the Giggs get for this one, he does. Suddenly there are three up for Manchester United. Giggs looking for Cantona, Cantona applauding the intention. Not in the end, the execution. You mentioned Stuart Ripley, the amount of possession. I was disappointed a moment earlier. He was backing Gary Pallister up to the edge of his box. And we know Stuart Ripley's capable of going and committing people and beating people. And he opted to try and cross it into an area where really Ian Pierce wasn't favourite at all. I'd like to have seen him drive at Gary Pallister and commit him a bit more. 
I'd just like to put this into some sort of context for you. Blackburn Rovers did not have one player sent off last season. And therefore, <laughs> not the teams at this level that you know have a disciplinary problem. But here they are at Wembley, in danger of having somebody sent off for a second portionable offence. With four players punished by Philip Don, who is reflecting the FIFA guidelines, the directives that go to all officials this season. points which lead to other suspensions as the season goes on Maybe we'll need bigger squads at the clubs PFA would like that wouldn't they the players union <laughs> that would be the, uh, the better side of the particular problem that their members are facing at the start of this season So hurry his work in fact forcing the error. That's the pace dropping for a moment or two as half time approaches. It'll stay that way for long, I'm sure. These two particular opponents. Blackburn investing so heavily financially to try and build a club, playing staff, a stadium to compete with the very best. They're taking on currently the very best here today. And it makes winning that much more satisfying, one would uh, expect for Alec Ferguson and all at Manchester United that they've had to work so hard to achieve the uh, double. Such a rare feat. Football, Liverpool under Kenny Dalglish, the previous club to do it, of course, back in 1986 when Everton played in the Charity Shield. And that was easier for the FA. They were runners-up in league and FA Cup in 85-86 season. One nil to Manchester United. A couple of minutes to go to half time. for Peter Schmeichel, more from the sunshine in the first half than for any sustained pressure that Blackburn Rovers have put on his goal. Yeah, they've just taken the foot off the pedal a bit, Manchester United, as if they're quite happy to cruise towards half-time, keep possession of the ball. Claire. Manchester United start in the Premiership next Saturday, home to Queen's Park Rangers, then they are Forest again will see live on Sky Sports. The following Saturday, on the way to Tottenham. Always one of the additional uh, attractive fixtures in any season. This is Wilcox for something for Blackburn before half time. Charles Gist starting to motor. Diggs. Claire, matching it forward to Hughes, strong enough to withstand the challenge. Charles gets to his right. Tim Miguel, grateful that the cross came his way. Miguel, connection with that, but incidentally Ray Harford, was involved with Tony and uh, goes at Fulham together. Miguel working well again, justifying the faith that Ray Harford and Tony Dudley have put in him at the moment. Ripley may uh, meeting the 
cross. Michael able to catch it. That's a decent cross. Ian Pierce has got a choice. He either pulls to the back or he makes a run inside David May. He opts to hold back post and that made David May's job a lot easier. They've got themselves into some decent situations, Blackburn. But the final ball really hasn't been up to it at the moment. But I don't think that's any surprise when we see them at attacking talent that they've got sitting in the stands today. And then one or two of the players who are wearing the famous blue and white cards are not 100% fit. And what's Philip Dunn going to make of this? Hughes is penalised in that the free kick is given to Blackburn, but nothing more than that. You can see Sherwood gets his, wraps his foot round the ball, and Mark Hughes is having a little nuggle. One, little one. Sherwood doesn't like it. It's pretty much like one or two people have been booked for already today. Slater. Worth a crack, and it's a good one. Schmeichel's fumbled it, but not enough for Mark Atkins to punish. He was following in. Good try by Slater. Good enterprise. Tucks inside. Lee Sharp, and we're always talking about going across goalkeepers. As an example of why, had that bounced out another yard or two, and Blackburn have got a player running in on that. I think the surprise element was there. I don't think Peter Schmeichel quite expected that, but it hit very well for him, Robbie Slater. Time ago now, Robbie Slater had a spell at Nottingham Forest, but uh, they didn't pursue their interest in him. He's now finally getting his chance in England. Pierce. Slater is free. Rousing finish in the first half from Roberts. Slater with the cross, but they're short of numbers in the centre. That was a pity. That's about the best move they've put together in the first half, Blackburn. Worked it very well from one side of the field to the other. But lacking bodies in the middle of the goal. Terrifically well taken by Giggs on the run. Hughes was launching himself for an overhead kick. And uh, very brave play by Henning Burke. It was a supercharged sprint from Giggs in the first place. Now Pierce, game spread at the moment. Sherwood going in, and uh, Schmeichel didn't like that. Is that the final act of the first half? Philip Don says, I'll have the ball. And uh, Eric Cantona's penalty separates the double winners of last season from the side who finished second in the Premiership. Paul Ince was brought down by Colin Henry for the penalty. And Cantona showed that uh, ice cool temperament that we saw in the FA Cup final when he struck twice from the spot then. So at half-time here, a lot to talk about during the interval with the rash of yellow cards. It's Manchester United 1, Blackburn Rovers Mill. The Charity Shields, prominent place on the football calendar, came from its switch to Wembley 20 years ago now. 1974, Leeds played Liverpool. Billy Bremner and Kevin Keegan were sent off. Very uh, Fiercely contested afternoon. And Philip Don comes out to a cacophony of boos from the uh, fans for a uh, strict interpretation of the FIFA directives in the first half. The five bookings and the possibility of a second yellow card for any of those five players. Something for Kenny Dalglish and Ray Harford to ponder on. Incidentally, Ray's son, Paul Harford, is one of the Blackburn substitutes today. years old as a trainee at Arsenal picked up with his father at Ewood Park so it's 1-0 to Manchester United United themselves could nominate five substitutes but have only uh, brought four backup players here no substitute goalkeeper Gary Walsh has been ill Spotting can 
Kuchelskis in uh, finding him effortlessly. May, and we enjoy being a winner today, one would uh, suspect. But there's a bit to be done yet for Manchester United, despite their first half supremacy. Not for the great battlers. But Mark Hughes carrying the fight forward for United and earning them a corner at the start of the second half. Spotting the ball up, but just uh, waiting for Diggs to cut across. Bruce has come forward. Gary Pallister waiting by the near post. Nice sort of flick on. Oh, very nearly causing the right sort of discomfort to Rovers. Well, that was just a bit perfect, Mark. Delivery was good from Giggs. The touch from Pallister was as straight as it needed to be. The only thing missing was a runner. Paul Ince actually gets in there. Like Brian Robson of old, you see in straight in there behind the play, but fractionally away from it. And that was the only thing missing from that. Bruce. Nick Collins has been talking to both camps during the half-time break. Let's hear the news, Nick. Well, Martin, Ray Harford actually uh, stopped referee Phil Don at the uh, top of the tunnel just before the teams came out for the second half, and he was clearly actually looking for some kind of clarification as to the new instructions. He said to Phil Don, uh, are you under instructions to book people for every tackle? And, and the referee actually had to explain very clearly to uh, Ray Harford exactly what his instructions were. So there is some confusion and consternation in the uh, Blackburn camp about the new interpretation of some of these rules. United but couldn't uh, get a deep enough cross in Here. 
to add their support to Rovers in their problematic position. Acceleration from Cantona. Hughes lets it run. <laughs> Spotted for Clare, or maybe hearing the call. Didn't quite come off for United. I think he probably got a call there from Hughes. season with a foot injury that required injections and uh, we tend to pay a price for that. Here's Giggs. Sherwood uh, walking back very well. Batting in again. Atkins. Blackburn showing signs of mixing it up a little bit positionally. Wilcox in the centre, we've seen him wide on the right. Trying to make Manchester United uh, think a bit more in the way they have to defend. Wilcox, who uh, caught the eye of Terry Venables last season. He was called up for a training squad for the England senior side. That's been the major difference in the last one. Manchester United have looked far more threatening than they've been in Blackburn's last third, whereas I think they need to go in the hole of quite, quite comfortably defensively today. But, sure. That's a passing for Blackburn, but not getting them very far. It's picked up in the end easily enough by Ince. Cantona. Such great counter-attack as Manchester United. I've got all the weapons to do that. A devastating effect, Kanchelskis, and it flies into the side netting. Well, Graham Mitchell did well. The one thing you don't want to do when you face someone with a pace of Kanchelskis is commit yourself to a tackle too early. Watch the way he just backs off here. He doesn't come in. He says to Kanchelskis, if you're going to beat me, then you're going to have to do something special. Turns very quickly, Kanchelskis can't get away from him. And he's unable to get the ball across. That was good defending from Graham Mitchell. Blackburn start their league season at Southampton. Home matches against Coventry and Leicester. What sort of side is Kenny Dalglish going to be able to put out next weekend? The side that he's uh, produced here, sticking to their guns, keeping Manchester United still within reach. Terrific ball, left to right, Graham Lasso to Stuart Ripley. I don't know whether Ian Atkins believed he could actually score there. It was like a Mark Atkins, it was like a token gesture, the shot, really. On his birthday, and um, couldn't give himself a present that <laughs> would have been much appreciated by Blackburn Rovers. Oh, 
always looked so commanding, his uh, physique gives you that impression. Say nothing of his ability. He goes back to uh, his old club Middlesbrough for a game uh, next week. Manchester United playing Brian Robson's new club. Gary Pallister was telling me he would be a uh, captain. He said he's going to take the penalties and the free kicks and really enjoy uh, the nostalgic return. Of course, he scored a, a famous free kick against Blackburn, didn't he? On the uh, day Manchester United celebrated winning the Premier League title two seasons ago. No progress there for Lee Sharp. Pitts showing up well. Gale. Sherwood. Yes, it's the move really was charging on through the centre but Bruce had kept pace with him all the way well it's a yard away from being a magnificent ball in Sherwood but credit Steve Bruce spotted it early and was able to do just enough to knock it back to his goalkeeper I tell you, got a bit lucky there against Wilcox but his pass was a poor one and so was uh, able to hammer it out of hands way so uh, confusable when they were in the same side as the commentators would be pleased that David May has forsaken the opportunity to play alongside Colin Hendry again two blondes who uh, often competed for the same ball in the air it seemed but, uh, absolutely sure which of them had uh, done the job down to now Char of options here for United, he was trying to lift it over for Giggs, back with Pallister, Bruce is telling him to play it back to Schmeichel. Here's Cantona. Blackburn really penned back at the moment. Atkins, the uh, first player to try and defend, but United find a way past the whole posse of midfield men for Rovers. Ince, fine play this. Is there going to be a finish to it? It might come from Kanchelskis. Still Kanchelskis. Well, that's the difference. Sean in this move here. So many options for United when they get along the 18 yard box. So much movement, not only that, so many players into that movement. Not afraid to throw midfield players forward. Look at Paul Ince, almost the furthest forward there, looking for Giggs. They've all moved away from Giggs, suck people in. Kuchelskis has left an acre of space here. You think he's going to shoot? Drags it inside, creates the opening. Oh, and that's the poorest part of the whole move. And there was no stinting on the work from Blackburn. Seven or eight players there really busting a gut to try and stop the move developing, but they just couldn't do that. Giggs. Against Burke. Pass Burke. Ryan Giggs. Well, a second goal seems so soon to be coming but it hasn't arrived yet well that's vintage gate as far as I'm concerned when he's going when he's going at pace now watch Berg he's trying to push him inside on his right foot but as soon as Gick turns him once then twice Berg's totally lost does everything right and going at first goal Atkins it's still only 1-0 to Manchester United Sherwood. Right, he showed a slow to close him down and Schmeichel is angry about that with some justification. You could see what uh, you could see what Berg was trying to do, Mark. He was trying to push him in on his right foot. He's, he wants Giggs to come in here, but Giggs is having none of it. He turns on one way, then the other. And look how close he is to finishing off that wonderful run. Well, that to me is what Ryan Giggs is all about. Well, we're looking 
looking at a defender with a real international pedigree in Henning Berg. There is nothing he could do there. And uh, as the months go by and Ryan Giggs gets even more experienced, gets physically to maturity, and you feel that there is still more to come and we've uh, seen plenty already from it. Remember last season he contributed 17 goals to Manchester United's effort. Ripley. Not too much sign of Blackburn getting a goal here, but you never know. With a Kenny Dark leash to. Cantona, Hughes! Who's sometimes a better bet from the edge of the area than he is from closer range, but uh, he didn't come up with the spectacular shot that time. Great uh, setup for Cantona. One for the scrapbook. I I'm not so sure Giggs isn't aiming for Kinchelskis here, but he picks out Cantona. And here's one, it's not often Mark Hughes feels to control a volley. Normally he loves that one, it was bouncing perfectly for him. Andy, let me throw something at you here. We've had 15 minutes without a booking in the second half. Now, has the message got through from the referee? Uh, and the game is exciting enough. Is that because of the clamping? I, I would suggest not that. I think we've just been lucky <laughs> that the referee hasn't been forced to decide that in a tackle, we've hardly the tackle the second half. Are they frightened to tackle? Well, this is what worries me. This should never become a non-contact sport, and I hope that's not the way we're heading. And it should never become uh, a non-emotional sport as well. There are certain uh, parts of the legislation that works against the passion of play. There's, there's enough in the first hour, Mark, to suggest the rest of the football in the uh, football world here. But Manchester United, a week from the beginning of the season, looked pretty good. This is Jason Wilcox, trying to look good for Blackburn. And so, it's there at his side to bend in the cross, it's beyond Schmeichel. And it's just gone out of play. Cross Pierce coming in beyond the far post. Not quite for Blackburn, but a note of encouragement. It's Hughes.
Pierce. Might drop for Ripley. Sharp at his back. Ripley pass sharp. Wilcox. Well, a couple of strikes at goal from Blackburn Rovers in quick succession. That one a good effort. Took it on you, quite comfortable in taking this on his right foot, which isn't as strong as Jason Wilcox, but he did rifle one or two in from that kind of area last season. But it was always rising above the crossbar. Built for the job of playing up front. Kind of a spell on loan at Wigan last season. His flip, Pierce back for Thorne again. It's been an uh, eventful introduction for him. He's seen plenty of the ball. Just put off his stride as he set himself for the shot. Well, when a game's set, Mark, sometimes you just throw on a player and it can alter it and it can change it your way. And there's young legs and a keen legs. Peter Thorne's trying to impress his manager. And he certainly made a bright start. And, uh, spotted something that he wants sorting out. It's as good a spell for Blackburn as they've had in the match. Show Ripley. And Rovers at the corner. I think Ripley's happy on the other. I think that's noticeable as well, even Sally out on in the change. take the corner trying to get it short to Wilcox the execution not quite right there Diggs Claire finding a bit of room for himself help at hand in the shape of Kanchowskis Loitering on the left. And we look at the build-up, seeing whether it might be uh, an avenue for United to explore. But, uh, they don't work the ball across that way, and it's Sherwood. Wilcox on the run. Pallister needing to accelerate. And had to pull down by Wilcox, who of course was booked in the first half for pulling back Kanchelskis when he was defending. This time Wilcox was the attacker. But it's a similar sort of infringement. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's what we wonder about this because that doesn't look any less of an <laughs> infringement. In fact, if you swap jumpers here, if you showed Kanchelskis, it would exactly be exactly the same up. But he gets booked in the first half, and I'm sure because he's already been booked, Philip <laughs> Don doesn't want to send a player off for that. You've got to find a lot of players who haven't been booked in the game get booked for nothing tackles. time of course but there would be a penalty shootout as we had last year between Manchester United and Arsenal Charge of the 
situation, telling Tony Gale he got time to just ease it back as Rovers galvanise themselves for more attacking work. It would be uh, some achievement if they were to get level with this pitched up team. And so, very much uh, one of the first choice players who is fit. Pierce. Chet Sherwood uh, thrust out a foot claim that he didn't have the last touch, but he did, and it gives us a chance to talk again to Nick Collins. Nick. Well, Martin, a, a quick indication of the spirit which exists between the two benches. Just now, uh, Blackburn coach Tony Parks came over to United's kit man Norman uh, Medhurst and asked for some studs for Tony Gale. Tony Gale had uh, problems with his studs. Uh, Norman happy to oblige. Tony Gale now has his new studs, so uh, there might be rivals out on the pitch, but uh, it's certainly a uh, friendly rivalry. Slip of the tongue, Nick, I think, but Norman Davis it is, the uh, long-serving kit man uh, at Old Trafford. On goes Ripley. Down goes Ripley. It's going to be a booking for Sharp. First of the second half, the sixth caution of the game. Well, I don't think there's any argument about this one. He's always looked like he's struggling here. That push of the ball there takes him away from Lee Sharp and all he can do is bring Stuart Ripley down. So is this the moment for Blackburn Rovers at Wembley? Possibility of an equaliser here. Show the Wilcox. But, uh, struck Paul Ince. Snyder easing it back to Lasso. United have pushed out. Sharp who was responsible for the problems in giving away the free kick. There's Sherwood. Certainly not given uh, this game up yet, back for Rovers. Ripley, lovely turn. Shot deflected. Oh! And Ian Pearce came in with a lot of the goal in front of him to aim at, which Michael wrong footed, and it was a great chance for Blackburn to draw level. Great skill from Ripley. Steve Bruce thinks he's going outside, turns inside. They get a bit of luck with the rebound. And really, Ian Pearce with a goal at his mercy should at least hit the target if he makes Michael make a save yeah I've got some sympathy with him but you've got to hit the target chances have been few and far between from Blackburn certainly chances of this quality and look at that it's the top of his foot off his toe and what's that two yards away yes it was too near the toe wasn't it had it been on the meat of the side of the foot there it would have been 1-1 one, one. face by Ripley trying to get to the ball there it's a good turn by Thor and it's Pierce again Schmeichel was uh, caught in two minds it seemed they got lucky you're exactly right man he did get caught in two minds he stops on his way out lovely ball through here and I thought come on goalkeeper it's yours but look look he stopped he stopped but when he needs a bit of luck look at that that's when it's with you but suddenly Blackburn Rovers finding an ascendancy in terms of uh, possession and penetration that they haven't shown earlier in the game. Attacking the end behind which uh, their supporters amassed Lasso. Here's Slater. All urgency about Blackburn. Concern for Manchester United here. And Bruce got to be a booking as well surely so it's three yellow cards for the team in the red shirts against four for Blackburn well the tails are up Blackburn's that's the secret behind it just now they've upped the pace of the game Manchester United have won the game played at a slower pace when they've the ball Blackburn need it played at a quicker tempo and at the moment they're having a lot of joy 15 minutes to go well that's uh, our new computerized system that tells you how far the wall is back it's back the right distance now 10 yards across the proper distance and here goes Tim Sherwood the wall does its job Rousseau's angry but uh, 
he thought the line wasn't in the correct position. May having to win the header there against Hendry. Well, all place here for the bravery of Blackburn. When they were invited to... Ooh, there's a tangle here with Hintz and Wilcox. Steve Bruce on the list of bookings. But when Blackburn qualify who were invited to participate in this match, this is not the side you would have expected them to field, not by any means. But the team who are out there putting on a very good show as they still try to repair the damage caused by Hendry's foul on Ince that led to Cantona's successful penalty, the only goal of the game. Well, for the first time in the match, Blackburn are, are able to deny United as much possession as they want. Mark Ferguson not looking for his substitutes, Nicky Butt. Keith Gillespie, the young Irish winger. Leon Dublin, of course, and Chris Casper. Chris Casper's father, Frank, played in the last charity shield that wasn't staged at Wembley back in 1973. Frank Casper for Burnley. They were winners against Manchester City. Smaller crowds in those days. 60,000 at Wembley today. And I would think uh, the majority is looking around in red and white rather than blue and white, although Blackburn very well represented. It's uh, turned out to be a good contest. I wondered in the first half whether Blackburn might be blown away having uh, conceded a goal relatively early in the piece. Ferguson still not with the uh, comfort of feeling that his team are going to win at Wembley again. The uh, position instructions passed out there, possibly towards Ryan Giggs. Maybe feeling that the game has got a bit stretched, trying to compress the play a bit more. There's plenty of room for Blackburn to uh, work in in the United half. But now the counter-attack has tried to land the punch once more. That, uh, the way they've operated so often in the past, so successfully, Kanchelskis, not a good cross when Cantona is pulling away to the far post, Hughes moving towards that area as well. Great example of what teams are up against. You feel you've got United under pressure, you feel you've got them where you want them, and within five or six seconds they're at your throat again, up your end of the pitch. And Paul Ince has gone across just to get uh, the chapter and verse from Alec Ferguson what those uh, instructions were. Gigs with the corner. It's Thorne who got to it. Came on for Blackburn. Clash of the crew cuts there. Slater and Lasso. <laughs> Slater a little angry at the uh, pass. Frustrated. Blackburn know that it's in good shape at the moment. And they want to keep going forward. But they're finding uh, Cantona to craft something. Drops off his head for Kanchelskis. Well, we have to get used to seeing it. David May, Manchester United. Joined Blackburn in July '86. In fact, even before that, he was on schoolboy forms at the club. Everyone almost went for flowers. He didn't call loudly enough. Henry decided he had to take it. Ince! 2 0. And that should mean the charity shield for Manchester United in spectacular fashion. He flew through the air with the greatest of ease. A brilliant goal from Ince. Oh, that's spectacular. We're used to seeing Mark Hughes do this sort of thing. Look how he enjoyed that. He's run 40 yards to the crowd. But Eric Cantona does everything right here. Look at the way he holds off the defender. Just knocks it back in. And how is that for skill? How is that for technique? That's absolutely first class. Watch Cantona. He holds him off. He knows he's only nicking it into an area. But what about that for skill? 
Should Flowers have uh, demanded the uh, the original ball in though, but uh, Hendry only half cleared it. He may have that's demanded it, Martin. Yeah, but as defender, their job I think is to put a head on it. They can't be leaving it unless they're 100 percent sure. My question was, should he have come then when Paul Henry had knocked up into the air? I think he thought about it, backed onto his line. Well, Paul Ince likes to get Blackburn Rovers in his sights, doesn't he? That equaliser in the Premiership at Old Trafford at such a crucial stage, it turned out to be a very, very valuable goal indeed in the league last season. And uh, if you remember the season before in that 3-1 finale, the Championship won against Rovers at Old Trafford, Ince was also a scorer. And he's done it again here, the very timely moment for Manchester United. When Blackburn were really making an impression on the game for really the first time. That's Hendry. And it's the outside of the net when they badly needed a ball to nestle on the inside of it. Well, people on this side of the ground thought this had gone into the net, Matt. All the Blackburn supporters were up here, but Graham so didn't give this up. He stuck at it, tries to beat David May, it drops to Henry, who's scored plenty of goals in his time. But look at this. Bump. Watch this. Great technique. Great technique. Well, he is one of the competitors in a very competitive team. Remember his run in the FA Cup final in the closing seconds when the game was over, dead and buried, but still he went on to set up Brian McClare for number four and rub uh, salt in Chelsea's wounds. And the message will be from the Manchester United supporters to the Manchester United management, get that contract sorted out <laughs> quickly. We want him for another six years. Oh, it was retrieved pretty well by Peter Thorne. Pierce was in the middle. But the difference, got there first. the difference there in what you say, Pierce was in the middle. Only one option, Mark. Whereas today, when Manchester United have found themselves in this sort of position, they've had two, three, and sometimes four red jerseys going in on it. As I say, with the amount of talent, attacking talent that Kenneth Dalglish doesn't have to choose from today, I don't think we should be surprised about that. We talk about taking a wind out yourself, the best spell in the game for you. And what did Manchester United do? Break up the park, get a corner, and you're 2 0 down, and basically out the game. Hughes. McLaren. Keeping it ticking over for Manchester United in midfield. Franceskis. Is he away here? Hendry <laughs> with that uh, sword of Damocles hanging over him, the uh, yellow card from early in the game. Had to be sure he was going to get that. And he did. It's sharp. Palace to 
taking their chance. Four minutes to go, Blackburn two adrift. Sherwood Dell had made the first run. Well, we're all really looking forward to next weekend and the start of the Premiership. Here on your football channel, we begin with a first look at Leicester City and the entertainers Newcastle United going to Filbert Street. Super Sunday starts at 3 o'clock. Monday night, it's Manchester United at Nottingham Forest. Giggs. Just the start. We're backing up the live action with a whole host of programmes tailored for football fans. Well, they just lost sight of the ball. Both Hughes and Gale lost it in the sun. But Giggs looks to be, well, he looks to be relishing the thought of the next week. 2 0 to Manchester United here. It was 2 0 to Kenny Dalglish's team uh, to Ewood Park in April. Two goals from Alan Shearer. But his absence, a critical blow, and he's not the only one out. Ripley, taken on by Berg. Thorne trying to get there. Quick off the blocks with Bruce. And that'll be the only thing that Kenny will be wanting this week, is I don't know how many of his players, Mark, and his important players are near to fitness. Well, Chris Sutton is, Alan Shearer is. Mike yeah, Newell's had surgery. David Batty, as we've seen, has come out here with the help of crutches. That's yeah. the fine million pound man. I'm sure if he got those two back, that would make him smell a little bit better on next Saturday. Hughes offside, Cantona. Didn't quite come quickly enough for Manchester United. So Cantona will be heading for an enforced rest. Whether he'll go back to France, I don't know. The referee, Philip Don, will. He's got a family holiday to resume. Flying back to Nice tomorrow morning. I hope he'll have uh, found time to fill in his report before he goes. <laughs> Need a bit of time. Here's it. Hughes. Find a way through. Then trying to as he lost his pass to work it wide to Kanchelskis. Didn't from another instant. Wilcox. Of course, uh, dealing with some of the uh, bad tackling is trying to address a problem that Blackburn have. Players injured, through being fouled. Because that's not the case for all the uh, absentees. Can't legislate for some bad fish that Alan Shearer ate when he was on holiday. Kanchels gets lovely run. Hughes flew just over fouls and just over the bar. You and I watched this Manchester United say a week ago at the Rangers tournament and they've come on a bundle since then. They look that weak, fitter, sharper. It's added it to them. They all look as if they're up for it now. They back off, they back off, and the one thing you can't do with Mark Hughes is back off too long. Well, it's been a brave show from Blackburn. They were certainly in it until a moment of real inspiration from Paul Ince. from by Pierce, here's Peter Thorne but Pierce again, good uh, interplay between the two front men Schmeichel oh, oh. didn't get there the first time Pierce was past him but not uh, in control of his own movement as he crashed down, the chance crashed away from Blackburn, the ball rolled tamely back to the Manchester United goalkeeper, Pierce is now offside. Oh, he wouldn't have scored anyway, Martin. Something would have happened that would have brought it back into Peter Schmeichel's arms. <laughs> well, we talk about goalkeepers riding a lot and getting a bit of luck, but watch this. Pierce goes past him, you think, oh well, Schmeichel's out of it now, because Pierce is round him, but watch this. <laughs> a back heel straight into the goalkeeper's arms.
it's another trophy for Manchester United. The double winners of last season now retain the charity shield. Too good in the end for a below strength Blackburn Rovers with Paul Ince sealing the victory spectacularly near the end with a wonderful overhead goal. Eric Cantona got it going for Manchester United. They were the better side clearly in the first half. Cantona's penalty after a foul on Ince by Colin Hendrick. But Blackburn really battled in the second half and were playing their most incisive football in the match when Hendry's half clearance only came back towards Ince and suddenly it was 2-0 and game over. But both sides, I'm sure, Andy will uh, put the result into proper perspective. But winning at Wembley in any circumstances is a very sweet experience. It is, Martin, but in normal circumstances, with two full-strength teams out, we may have been able to read a little bit more into it. I think it's a scoreline that won't surprise anyone who's been here today and who's watched the game. So, Tom Finney, who, of course, lives very close to Blackburn at Preston, guest of honour today, a great uh, Lancastrian footballer in his prime, who graced the Wembley turf many times during his 76 appearances for England, and uh, Lancastrian occasion here. Well, many Blackburn fans, I'm sure, still uh, pinching themselves to uh, believe what's happened over the past couple of years, but you can believe that Jack Walker and Kenny Douglish do not like coming second and they will dig deep again I wonder whether there'll be some more transfer business coming up in the next few days Alec Ferguson was telling me this morning that he might yet look to sign another Englishman before the European deadline that's uh, coming up shortly so up come Manchester United as Jack Walker watches on Steve Bruce knows these steps so well and so do the United players behind him up here to collect the FA Cup only three months ago, up here to pick up the Charity Shield this time last year. Manchester United currently setting the standards in the English game. Staying at the top is tougher than getting there in the first place and they'd be happy to be back here this time next year to go for the hat-trick. Well today it's hats off to Manchester United again. And the charity shield stays amongst the silverware at Old Trafford. <laughs>